Hello everyone. In this video, I will share with you some strategies to successfully parent your preteen. Welcome to Ruth Straight Talk, the channel designed to help teachers, parents, and students live fuller lives, become lifelong learners, and grow into the awesome human beings you were designed to be. I'm Cynthia Ruth. Your preteen is not the same person he was just a year or two ago. He has changed physically, cognitively, emotionally, and socially. He's developing a new independence and may even want to see how far he can push limits set by his parents. What he may or may not know is that he needs you as much as ever because a strong parent-child relationship can set the stage for a much less turbulent teenage or adolescence. But it won't be easy because you as a parent need to respect your child's need for greater autonomy in order to maintain that parent-child relationship. So here are some pointers on how to help your preteen. Number one, don't feel rejected by their newfound independence. It's appropriate for children this age to start turning away from their parents and relying more and more on their friends. But parents can take this as a withdrawal or a rejection. It's not about you. It's about the child trying to forge his own way in the world. Number two, set aside special time with your child. It is often tough to get pre-teens to open up and talk. So set some time aside, maybe once a week, where you will be uninterrupted and just hang out with him. Even if you resist, keep trying to lock in those times. In doing so, you're not only improving your relationship at this time, you're also teaching interpersonal skills that are going to be crucial for his future. Number three, try the indirect approach. As your teen grows, he will become more private, and if you ask direct questions, say maybe about his day, he might become secretive. You just want to know about his day, so you have to change the way that you approach him. So don't ask. Just sit and listen to him, and you will be surprised how much he will share. This approach gives kids the message that this is a place where they can come and talk, and they have permission to say anything that they are thinking or feeling. Sometimes you'll be able to help and give advice, but don't try to step in and solve all their problems. Other times you just need to be there to empathize with how hard it is to deal with whatever it is that they're going through. Number four, don't be overly judgmental. At this age, kids become wary of adults that are judgmental. They will take their cues on how you talk about other people's children, especially children that are always getting into trouble. For example, look at how those, that girl dresses, or that boy has good manners, or no manners at all. The, these kids are watching and deciding whether you are harsh, critical, or judgmental. Number five, watch what you watch with them. Beginning in middle school, watching the stuff that your child wants to watch with him and being able to laugh at it and talk about it is an important way to connect and to be able to discuss subjects that would normally be taboo, for example. This way, you can still gently reinforce moral and ethical standards when they are challenged by the media. And you can give, you may even be able to talk to them about sex and drugs. However, be sure to keep that conversation light and if possible, use humor to talk about it. Number six, don't overreact, but don't be clueless either. 
When your child deliberately does something that he knows is against the house rules, for example, hosting a party when you're not at home, be firm and precise about explaining what he did wrong and why it is wrong. Then be sure to follow up with reasonable consequences. He may be angry and self-righteous through the process, but he needs to take responsibility for his actions. The bonus strategy, gender-specific tips. A, encourage your daughters to play sports. Girls' self-esteem peaks at the tender age of nine and then drops off from there. But research shows that girls who play on teams have higher self-esteem. Girls on sports teams also tend to be do better academically and have fewer body image issues. B. Nurture your boy's emotional side. At the very least, parents can do everything that they can to encourage their boys to be sensitive and vulnerable at home while at the same time acknowledging the reality that those traits might not go over well at school. Their friends may say that anything to do with real feelings like love, sadness, vulnerability is girly, therefore bad. Gently show them that this is not always true. So there you have it, six great ways to help parenting your preteen. If you develop trust with preteens, you can offer them a safe place to come back to no matter what their, their world is doing. And in doing so, you'll be setting the stage for a smoother adolescence. Thank you so much for visiting with us at RuthStraightTalk.com. If this video has helped you, please like us and leave us a comment at the bottom of the screen. And please subscribe to my channel for more great videos like this one. Until next time, happy learning and goodbye.